Hey, hey, we are live from downtown Champaign, Illinois. It's a, uh, well, it's been an okay night for me. And I'm sitting here watching the Cardinals. And they're not going to score again. Man, I need my Cardinals to get into the playoffs, especially on the one fall where I get to watch every game they play because I'm not coaching football. I really need them to make the playoffs this year. All right. So my live video is up and working. This is a hangout. We've been doing hangouts Monday through Thursday nights, and it's Thursday night now, which means darn near my video weekend. And tonight's topic is eight-man football. We've got a couple eight-man football coaches in the house to hang out with us. Let's go get them in the room, in the chat. It's Clint Schwartz from MCP, that's Milford Cisna Park football here in Illinois, and Keith Mora out of keith where are you out of i thought i looked it up here earlier keith are you out of ohio yes i didn't realize they were playing eight man football in ohio it's it's relatively new um they had a couple teams uh flip to it last year out of necessity because uh a couple schools up in Northwest Ohio's 11 man programs kind of fell through right at the last second and they kind of just threw it together and played a couple games. Um, and then this year we, we launched it's the Ohio's first conference. And, uh, I think it may have picked up a little more steam had, uh, COVID not become such a, a rampant thing in sure, March. Sure. We, we were picking up some steam with, uh, some schools having some interest in making the switch, but no one's going to do that given all the other things going on. So, Right, right. Well, Keith, uh, welcome. Good to have you. Uh, you're alongside Clint Schwartz, who's a friend of mine. We go way back, man. But Clint is the head coach at Milford High School, and uh, they're in a part of a co-op, Milford Cisna Park. They're the 2018 Illinois State Champs, and that was the first year Illinois ever played eight-man as an association. And uh, this last year, they were the state runners-up. Welcome, Clint. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Things are good. Good. Well, it's good to have you, and uh, you got a football here with uh, fall with no football. But Keith, from what I understand, you guys are playing, right? Ohio's playing ball. Yeah. Yep. We're playing. Um, so the rest of the state is operating on on kind of a funky, different system. Uh, everyone's allowed basically six games before they they enter into a, a situation where all teams that are in the OHSA make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, which is the first time that's happened. Uh, usually you have to qualify. It's not one of the states that just allow everyone in. Um, and that was obviously intriguing to a lot of schools who were on the fence between 11 or eight, man. They're like, well, we can make the playoffs. We'll, we'll go ahead and, you know, stay 11, man. Yeah. Um, it's a big influence. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, for us, the, the rules didn't really apply the same way. So we were able to play our, our regular schedule. So we're going to get, uh, eight games and then within our conference there's also one team in the state that's not a part of our conference um, we're going to play like a bowl game scenario where the, the number one and two teams in the state pair off and then the three and the four will pair off and um, okay. so we'll just you know, work it out from there Okay, well, great, man. Well, that's exciting to hear. You know, and and we're just we're just probably two years ahead of you in Illinois. That maybe uh, sounds like. Um, but really tonight, I don't, I don't really want to spend any time talking like why eight man, because I'm just over it. I'm just over it. Eight yeah. man is about men who love football, who believe in a community and whose community happens to be small, small enough that playing with eight men makes more sense. And that's what it's about. I'm done with the conversation of whether or not it, whatever, I'm done with it. I'm here to talk to some football coaches and uh, Keith, and I don't know. How big, how big is your school? So our district has about 650 kids K, K through 12. Okay. So, so what's that, how many is that, how many is that put in the high school? Give me an idea. I'm trying to uh, do the math here. We're right around like 245, 250. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that's not that's far off. Boys. That's boys and girls. Right, right, yeah. Uh, that's not far off from what where about Clint School is. Well, I want to talk a little eight man football now. How many years have you been uh, coaching eight man, Keith? So this is my first year coaching eight man, and this is my eleventh year coaching football. Okay, well let's just kick it off. We'll go back and forth. Usually when we're hanging out, 
Um, I go back and forth between checking in with guys in the chat and checking in with our coaches that we have here. Tonight we're going to be live here, and I'm live from um, Champaign, Illinois. Clint's live out in the country kind of near between Milford and Cisna Park is from what I understand, right? Oh, yeah, I'm actually in school in Milford. But yeah. Oh, okay, he's still at school, still at work. Good for you, working hard. And Keith, out in Ohio, what's the name of the town? Uh, Marblehead. Okay, and, and what city is it nearest? It's near, like, Sandusky, Ohio. Okay, yeah, I know Sandusky. We're on peninsula hanging into Lake Erie. Okay, fantastic, man. Well, I want to welcome everybody that's in the chat. If you're here, man, please check in with us. Say hi. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we got a great community of guys that usually hangs out with us. Um, one thing that I'm going to just kick things off with, and Clint, I'll start with you. What is it that you think? When I was, and I've coached in eight-man football for one year, what is it do you think is – so much trickier about defending with eight defenders than with 11. At least I felt like that. There was something about it that I felt like I felt like I had less answers, but I don't know if I can figure out why. Welcome, Logan Foster. Welcome, man. Thanks for checking in. And uh, we just asked Clint, what do you suppose? Do you feel that same thing? And do you have any ideas why that is? Yeah, absolutely. I feel that same thing. You know, it is difficult. I always feel like you're just about one guy short, um, yes. you know, no matter what zone you draw up, you know, cover three, you know, there's cover three teams. I mean, that looks, looks crazy. You know, there's man to man teams. And I mean, that scares the death out of me. <laughs> you know, receiver. Right. To play it all the time. You know, we sit in a two, two, four. So we play with two safeties um, more just for my security. I like the three levels of, you know, maybe someone having a mistake and someone being able to cover it. But, you know, I, I guess I don't know for sure what it is, but I just always feel like there's, I don't know if it has to do with the even number, you know, of eight guys, you know, being an even number and they're just, when the offense still is able to have four vertical threats, I think that's a really big thing that's hard to defend. Um, but I mean, I don't have the exact answer, but that's, that's my feelings on it. It is tough. Well, I think that you hit something there when you said you still have four vertical threats, like, right? So you're playing with less defenders but you're not facing less vertical threats. And I think, my, my best hunch is I think that has something to do with it. Again, I haven't put pen to paper long enough to really know an answer, but I feel like that might have something to do with it. The fact that you haven't lost vertical threats, but you have lost defenders. Keith, what defense did you guys settle on this year uh, to roll into the season with? Yeah, so... Uh... We played around with a lot of things, but what we settled on was a 4-1, a 4-2 kind of scenario. Um, what Clint is talking about in terms of man coverage freaking him out. Yeah, I live that life every single Friday night because uh, it's scary at times. Because um, <laughs> when, when, when you pack in the box, you're, you're limited on the edges. So, yeah, um, it, it's worked for us. I don't know how much you want me to talk about what we're doing. No, any of it. Yeah, yeah. So you said 4-1 or 4-2. Um, yep. So it sounds like you are, are. You guys are going ahead and manning up. Did you say how much percentage yeah, would yeah. you say you're playing man? We, we have how much percentage am I playing man? Yeah. A hundred percent. Okay. So you guys um, are gone man. It's just, it's just, we, we have a couple variations within man. Um, we call it Yo-Yo and Zorro. And then we, we just installed a, a press Zorro where basically we are, we're either Yo-Yo as in like wherever he goes, you go to. Yeah. Or we play a, a switch man uh, type of scenario where um, our, our kids get into a back pedal and allow the, the crossers to, to be passed off. Um, and then we just installed a press Zorro where basically we're going to stick one player out in the flats and play it more like a, a, a cover three court flat player with um, our two. Basically, I'm looking at like a twins scenario where we, they're both going to get depth, one down the hash, the other down the numbers. Uh, and we're going to bail out our mic. Um, it's worked well for us. We just hit our first air raid team and it kind of exposed us a little bit. Okay. Um, we still won the game, but it, it wasn't nearly as comfortable as it's been, you know, the previous couple of weeks. But the man, the man switching has been good to us, especially when we can, we can alternate throughout the night uh, and kind of keep teams off, you know, off guard a little bit. I like that. I'm curious about that. I might ask a few more questions about there. Logan, about that. Logan Foster in the house. Well, Chicago Ghosts, um, 
I had said hi once upon a time and then retracted the message. Don't know why. But welcome, Chicago Ghost. Haven't seen you around before. Welcome. Uh, Logan Foster in the house out of Brookfield, Illinois, formerly a Hoopston guy. And uh, I actually coached with his brother. And Logan Foster says 100% man gives me anxiety. And uh, I'm in the same boat. Definitely in the same boat. Now, Clint's defense, I know fairly well because uh, he and I played against each other. He whooped our rear ends. But um, I've also, then last year, I did a fair amount of covering the, what in Illinois they call it the IFA. And uh, so just was pretty familiar with him, you know. And I've, I've been the announcer for both state title games in the last two years where Clint's team has played. So I'm fairly familiar with his team. Um, Coach, I know you guys, at least you look to be in a cover two shell. From They've, they've settled on a 2-2-4. Two, two, it's a very unique defense. And here's the thing. I would like to encourage anybody that's watching or whether you're watching live or you watch this over the next couple months. Um, Clint, your team is known, known for the incredibly explosive offense that you've had in the last two years. However, unsung has been how what great defense you guys have been playing, and you guys settled on a 2-2-4, and you seem to be almost in, almost exclusively zone. I'm, I'm sure maybe there are times where you play man, but that's what I seem to be seeing, almost exclusively zone. Talk to us a little bit about the defense you guys settled on. Yeah, so we were on the two two four, you know, and we were trying to go into eight man, you know, it was a kind of what do we want to do? And I, I just couldn't bring myself to go to man. I can't, I can't live it. It wouldn't be good for my health. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be good for my wife, who is our trainer. Uh, anybody near me? Uh, so you know, and then it also scared me just having the two levels. You know, if you're sitting in man, and plenty of teams do it, and they do it with success. Um, but you know, just only having the two levels, really, the linemen and the linebackers to stop the run game. And then if someone breaks through, it's kind of off to the races. Uh, so that's kind of where we kind of ended up with our 2 2 4 of really our cornerbacks who play on the outside. So we sit in a cover two shell, um, and our corners are really kind of the hybrid outside linebacker, cornerback types. Right, you right. Know, at the edge for us, they're our edge defender. Um, but mainly we do sit in the cover two. You know, there are times, you know, where trips, trips causes us to go to man on the backside of it to that mm -hmm. single receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's some other game planning things that kind of depends on what teams want to do but last year we were fortunate we had some really good athletic safeties uh, so we were able to kind of play a little bit more man with them but I would say 85 to 90 percent of the time we we sit in z cover two zone and you know we we rarely ever call a blitz everything is kind of game plan off of formation um, you know I'd say we're two four but if you come out and you know, tight end on one side and say twins on the other side, you know, our corner is going to walk down and be three by three offense. All of a sudden he's in the box. Um, you know, it's just kind of really, really varies on what the offense does. We just kind of morph into what the offense does. But the really the one thing that if you ever watch us play that never changes is, is our inside guys. Mm -hmm. you know, our two D linemen, we stack over the guards. Mm -hmm. You know, we do ask them to, uh, their two players, you know, we work like crazy on reads and I mean, they're not, I mean, we've been fortunate to have some good D linemen, but not all the kids that rotate in are, you know, are the world's best at it. Uh, but then our linebackers stack about four to five yards right behind them. And, you know, that that we try our best to not unstack them. Um, you know, no matter what, if usually if one guy bumps over, they're all bumping over with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, been super impressed with you guys' defense. Um, the, the patience with it, the, the consistency of it has been really impressive. Keith, talk to us about your guys' defensive influences and uh, in your opinion, like how do you, here's, I'll just start with this because maybe you're not guilty of this. I am. One of the things that Clint did so much better than me and our, both of our, we were both in our first year coaching eight man in the same year was that he had a plan. He stuck with it. And that's something that I had trouble doing. So what is it that you guys have have did you guys seek out some great advice have you guys kind of been rolling with it as you're going and figuring out as you go have you had some big influences here um because you know year one is always the toughest because not only you know, it's just there's so much transition uh so talk to us a little bit about that transition and in, in your influences and and such. yeah well so in, in all of our 11 man years since I've been at Danbury, we we've pretty much been exclusively in an odd front defense. And so when I when I 
came into it to eight man, I was trying to just do, do some research on like, what's the best defense or what's the best odd front defense. Although, you know, the first thing I look up, because there's not a ton out there on eight man football when, when you're out here researching, um, one thing I found was that, you know, a 3-2 tends to play more like a 4-3 of 11-man football, and a 4-1 plays a little bit more like a 5-2 from 11-man defense. And as soon as I saw that and read that, my ears perked up because we talk about 5-2 defense. That's 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 really speaking to my uh, my, my soul there because I love the 5-2 defense. And okay, yeah. Spread offenses are killing the 5-2. But um, I, I started doing some research into it and just trying to find – one thing I, I've kind of prided myself on at, at Danbury is we, we want to run things that no one else around here is running because we are the smallest school typically in the area. So if I'm running a spread, I, I certainly don't have the guys to do it like the neighboring town does. So um, so for us, it's always about like, how can we be a little bit different and, and force you to really have to game plan for us? Um, and as I looked at the other teams that, that are in Ohio playing uh, eight-man football, nobody was playing a 4-1 at the time. And so what I started diving into was who out there, who out there is running a four one. And the one school I came across is a school called Cary high school out in Idaho. Mm-hmm. And they just happened to have a whole bunch of YouTube uh, videos. So me and our, our offensive coordinator just sat there and just watched and watched and watched one day. And I'm like, man, there's some really cool things these guys are doing. Like, I, I'm not so certain about like the, the DNs flying up the field the way they do, but like there's a lot of really cool concepts within this four one. I'm liking it. Um, and so then as we continued to, to look at things and we got a little bit closer to our two a day time period, we kind of morphed it down to the four, two, because I felt like one of our best players wasn't getting involved in the run game fast enough. Um, and we were pretty committed at the time to being a, a man defense. So our thing was like, if he's going to get bumped out anyway, why not just leave him, you know, it, at the second level with the, with the Mike backer and just play it as a four, two, it just, show our hand early say like you're, you're not gonna run on us tonight we have too many guys in the box you're gonna have to spread us out or, or you're gonna have to pass the ball over top of our, our dbs um and so that's that's where our that's where our influence came from is, is that school out and carry and then just the love of the 5-2 defense and that no one else around here really runs it yeah well that's great to hear man well for i'm gonna let me check in with my guys in the chat welcome everybody in the chat coach kiroga out of chicago has checked in ramiro martin has checked in and ramiro i remember you from maybe a week ago two weeks ago but i forgot where you were from for some reason i'm thinking arizona right now uh but please remind me where where you're from uh larry albo in the house i know where you're from that's my old man and uh, he doesn't like it when i say that he's uh, i found that out he doesn't like it when i call him my old man so and that's my dad um but welcome all of you guys in the house tonight uh we are live right now and i got clint schwartz out of mcp football milford cisna park here in illinois they've been to back-to-back state title games and keith mora out of ohio what you said the high school is danbury Danbury High School. Danbury yep. High School in Ohio. Um, he's in his first year coaching eight-man football. And uh, we are live talking eight-man football for 30 minutes. And at about 8.30, we'll transition over into one of our clinic videos from the online clinic. That's over at clinic.chiefpigskin.com. We got a couple eight-man uh, videos on there. This com- upcoming off-season, I'll be hitting the road again looking for more eight-man content. Tonight's YouTube vid- uh, tonight's clinic video that'll be on here. What's up, Coach Freeman out of Minnesota? Welcome, Coach Freeman. Um, tonight's YouTube video will be from Clint Schwartz and his high-powered offense, very um, power and counter based, right? Very, you know, with your four, he's got a four-man surface and they're deadly with it. Uh, boy, they've wreaked a lot of havoc here in Illinois. Russell Bell in the house out of Lake Lure, North Carolina, helping eight-man team in Montana and a nine-man team in North Dakota. Are you doing a little remote coaching, Coach Bell? That's really cool. Well, welcome, Coach Bell. I haven't seen your name before here. Uh, Really excited to have you. Thanks for checking in. So again, tonight at 8.30, we'll transition over into one of our our videos from our online clinic. That'll stay here on the YouTube channel for about a day uh, before it comes down. But this little conversation here will stay on for good. So we thank you guys for checking in. Clint, I want to ask you, you had said, this might have been a year, maybe two years ago, this might have been in year one, you guys have been pretty committed to your 224 uh, for a while, that 22 stack, it's almost like a stack, it's stackish, you know, right? 22 stack in the middle over those guards, and then a cover two shell on the outside. But you had said, when we found out, when a team 
wants to play a fullback we have to make some adjustments. And I think you had gone up to Wisconsin to play one of their better teams. And we were in first year of eight man here in Illinois. So you had said you had learned some stuff about that. If you could recall, could you um, could you try to, to remember or, or call, think back to what was it that you learned about some thing, adjustments you got to make against teams that are playing with a fullback? Well, yeah, when we went up to Wisconsin, they were they were a spread team. And we learned, well, they were about 80 to 90% past the ball. And so we thought, well, sit and cover two, we're sitting really good. You know, and so when they'd go two receivers on one side, you know, our corners over there, well, they proceeded to, I think, throw the ball about three times all game and ran. I think they're still running on that field right now. <laughs> like, okay. But, and so I would talk to their coach after the game, you know, what was the big thing? He just said, your corners played outside on those receivers. So there's these giant holes, you know? So that was one of the main adjustments is now when we get two receivers, our corner, he sits over number two. You know, he's okay. five yards now, off. so if you're, are you, but you're still playing cover two over two. Yeah, so we're playing cover two. Um, really, and really, you can almost picture it as an outside linebacker. You know, when we yeah. pass, his job is to turn and sprint and get underneath number one. Yeah, but you know, by he, alignment, he's got to stay over two. Yes, he, he, and we were just talking to our kids the other day. He is there not because of a passing thing. He's there from a run game standpoint. Yes. Uh, because again, he has to play that dual role for you. Not only does he have to play the flat and your cover two, but he's also your force defender. Yes. So absolutely. that's unique. Have, okay. So really, our, safe, our safeties are almost stacked over the top of them. You know, so really both of them are almost over number two. That's kind of how we get away with that. You know, you think cover two is, hey, we want to inside release the guy. Yeah. Go inside. You know, we get away with that by moving those corners out a little bit. And that the 40 yard wide field helps out with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, obviously possible on a 53 yard field okay um, i like that adjustment and that's a big deal just knowing that, and you had to learn that the hard way oh right yeah. i mean no, how else was, do you learn that we, went up there and we took our beating and we spent i don't know three four hours on the bus ride home you know just all the coaches just talking the whole time about all these things that we learned and other uh, coach was nice enough i mean he pretty much kind of said this is why we did what we did yeah you no know, one really helped out from that standpoint but yeah you know you were talking about fullback, you know, if a team comes in and plays with the fullback, so really they, if they have two running backs in the backfield, it changes almost our whole defense. I say that we check into our kind of, we call it, it's our goal line defense. I, I say goal line, but we'll check into it anywhere. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, if they're going to play two, two guys in the backfield, you know, so now there's really only two vertical threats. Yes. You know, we're, we don't consider, a, if a wing is out there, a wing's the vertical, or if a wing is a vertical threat, so we don't mm -hmm. consider them back there. But if there's only two vertical threats, we will check to man. We're going to check to man. We're going to bring both of our corners off the edge. Mm -hmm. um, because if, you're, if your quarterback is also under center, you know, we're going to drop down a linebacker. So really, and our corners are up tight too. So really, it almost turns into a 5 1, mm. you know, if you're playing double tight. But, you know, if you have two running backs, you put your quarterback in the gun. So there's no immediate quarterback, you know, quarterback wedge threat. You know, we're going to drop our linebacker back. So it's really going to look like the 4 2. Okay. Um, but our same guys stay in there. That's kind of the one of the only times that we'd like to break out of that stack. But just that immediate threat of our corners coming off the edge has treated us unbelievably good. Awesome. I like hearing that. All right, Keith, we're going to come to you next. First, I want to check in. Russell Bell asked, um, and I think this might question might be for you, Clint. He said, are you trying to leverage all the gaps? I mean... Yeah, I guess you could kind of say that. So really, I mean, if you think there's the three line in the center, the two guards, and if there's two receivers out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, with our corner, the way he's playing, he's, I guess you could say he's a A, I don't know, a Y, B, I guess you yeah, could say. Yeah. There's only an A and a F. I mean, he's out there. And then our, like I said, our defensive linemen, they two, or they two gap it. And so they're really trying to take up that A and B. We don't necessarily tell our linebackers, hey, you're going to have A gap this play or you're going to have B gap. You know, they're going to make the reads. And, you know, we just try to hopefully fast flow. Really, it comes down to, um, you know, our, I guess we, we just play it like a triangle. So it's really we have, you know, we run this fit drill. We ran it all the way back to 11, man. Actually, I learned it from you when you, we coached together. Is We have a force player, which is our outside guy. We have the wall. Uh, which is our, either a D lineman or linebacker, and then our hat is our safety. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all of those three guys need to get there together. I mean, you can't necessarily say we're a gap team, but we are. I mean, that, if I, I guess if that's what I told our kids for the most part, hey, you're responsible from pretty much here to here. <laughs> but with the linebackers, that could change. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that really didn't 
Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Coach Bell, for that. Um, all right, well, I'm going to come over to you, Keith. I'm going to give you a little warning, and I'm going to give you a minute to think about it while I go check in with our guys in the chat. What I would love to hear from you, Keith, if you, and give you a second to think about it, is can you think of a lesson that you guys have learned already this year? Like maybe you came in thinking this, but, man, they hurt you with this, and we learned we had to do X, Y, or Z. So take that where you want to. I'll be right back in about 30 seconds after I check in with my guys in the chat. Guys in the chat, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, looks like we got nine guys watching now. Man, we're live. I'm in downtown Champaign, Illinois. We got Clint Schwartz out of Milford, Illinois. Keith Mora out of uh, Danbury High School. Dansbury? Danbury? Danbury. Danbury High School um, in Ohio playing his first year eight-man football and uh, thank you guys for checking in. if you haven't checked in yet please check in let us know where you're watching from say hi we're live here for about another seven to ten minutes and then we'll be switching over to a clinic video that comes from the online clinic the online clinic is at clinic.chiefpigskin.com and uh, it's ten bucks a month I mean, i'll tell you what we're just really proud of the online clinic. And so I've been hustling my butt off. Uh, you know, I, I teach during the day. I get over here every night, Monday through Thursday, to push out more videos and let people see what we got on the online clinic because we're proud of it. I've traveled all over the nation for this. I've been, I've been to Ohio several times. I've been to Maryland. I've been to West Virginia. I've been to Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, California, Colorado. I, I've been everywhere for this thing. I'm really proud of it, and I would love for you guys to check it out. Before we get over to Keith, I want to ask you guys to leave us a like if you could thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for checking in with us tonight. Um, and we're kind of in our closing thoughts of our eight-man football hangout, our live hangout. Keith, did you think of any lessons that you guys have learned or even one? Yeah, I learned it last Friday, uh, last Saturday night uh, in Toledo, Ohio. Um, so again, we, we play a 4-2 defense. We basically show our hand early on. You know, we, we we're very confident that, that we can do a, a nice job stopping the run. But obviously, when you commit uh, six guys to the box, the first thing any any coach is going to do is say we got to spread them out. I'm sure you know with, with what Clint does, and I've seen Clint's uh, uh, clinic. You're going to spread us out. I'm sure of it. And and so that's that's where we hit our our first roadblock. We were fortunate enough to win the game still. Um, but basically what we, we saw our first air raid football team. Um, and one thing that we did kind of poorly was knowing who we are as a man defense, we didn't do a great job of influencing their receivers who are clearly just reading our alignment and then taking what we give them. We did kind of a poor job in my opinion of influencing where we want those guys to run their routes to. So obviously if if, if the quarterback's looking out wide first and he's looking for, for depth, so it, are, are we lined up at eight yards? If so, then he's going to take the hitch. If we're up tight at four or, or closer, he's going to he's going to throw the fade. That's kind of like air raid 101 kind of stuff. And our corners didn't do a great job of coming out of breaks. So um, although we, we will let them throw a hitch all night long over obviously over the fade over top of us, sure. um, we, we weren't great there. And then they had a pretty lethal uh, slot receiver. Um, they ran a lot of two by two and then some two by one and their slot receiver is, is, is a serious athlete. Um, and we didn't do a great job at times of kind of dictating where his route needed to go. It wasn't really until later in the game that we started running um, what we call it a trap coverage, which is basically just yo-yo out on the number ones. And then we outside leveraged with our, with our uh, we call him our eagle backer, but basically just a linebacker who we bump outside. Um, we outside leverage with him and then leave a free safety in the middle of the field. So obviously we had to get out of our four one a little mm -hmm. bit that night. We played more of a three one. Okay. Um, and that outside leverage allowed him to take what we're giving him, run the slant. And now we're sitting there with our, our free safety over the top to kind of trap the, the slot. Um, we ended up doing that later on in the game, but it, it wasn't early on. It probably should have been um, because our inside alignment at times gave them a, a pretty easy fade. And uh, we, we probably should have, moved our, our free safety over towards that hash a little bit earlier in the game. Um, fortunately, and I clearly this, this is not an offensive uh, uh, meeting tonight, but um, we, we were fortunate enough to score 82 points in that game, but we also gave up 64. So <laughs> humongous lesson learned. Um, uh, 
we, we've, we've been a pretty good defense up until that that game and now I'm answering you know questions from the papers on what am I going to do to fix our broken defense and yeah yeah I think the answer is just find better ways to leverage really good wide receivers uh and kind of put them where, where you need them to go so that was a lesson learned for sure last Saturday night well again I mean sometimes you got to learn lessons the hard way um and the good news is is that well, if you have a staff that cares about it and is excited about the game, then you do learn the lessons and you do get better, you know, and you do fix those things. And and I know at least because uh, I know of who Clint coaches with, I think feel like uh, probably fortunate had a, a long time veteran coach with him um, that loved the community that he could troubleshoot with. You know, I feel like that was probably a big deal and, and had to be beneficial um, for Clint and the defensive coordinator that he had. Well, we're about to wrap up. I just want to ask Clint because I feel like we it would do us justice to do so. In the state championship game last year, Clint, um, we got to take our hat off to your opponent, Polo, who defended you guys probably better than anybody had in quite some time. Now, you guys had some things go against you. Obviously, the largest being they lost their t star tailback to a broken leg. That Listen, losing your star tailback, okay, it changes everything. I get it. But Polo did a couple things, X and O-wise, that I thought, I thought was good. Do you have a feeling for what do you feel like they did well that um, you would tip a cap to defensively? Right. Um, no, I think they did a really good job. You know, they're a really good football team, really well coached. Um, I mean, really the thing that kind of gave us problems was, you know, I could say the six in the box, uh, but it was kind of their shift of the linemen over. You know, a lot of times we see, we'll see four down linemen, you know, but they still some for some almost reason, they still play it almost even, you know, two on one side, two on the other. Um, you know, that gave us a little bit of fits and just the way their defensive ends were able to play, you know, I never thought the defensive end would be able to shut down our, uh, our jet. And, you know, that gave us trouble. Um, and then everything kind of feeds off of our jet motion, yeah. you know, with, with the track back underneath of it and, you know, QB counter off it, you know, they did a good job. Um, you know, it turned in, you know, it turned into, you know, we, I mean, it almost looked like we were playing a video game a little bit on offense eventually because we just took shots with our receiver after, you know, yeah. consistently. Consistent. Yeah, and he's super special. You know, but, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we were perfectly fine with that side of it from the passing standpoint. But, you know, the beef was just, they're tough. They're tough nosed kids. You know, they did a really good job with it. And, um, you know, I still like to put out the petition to ban double tight, triple option football. <laughs> I think that should almost be illegal. Yeah. But, that um, was you know, that, yeah that was a nightmare after Christmas to get over it. <laughs> and uh, yeah they they ran the triple option really well and i was sitting there with pen took pen to paper after the game and i'm like how would i defend it and of course same thing i'm like i i don't know i don't know there's two they got too many guys surely somehow the, the triple option gave them nine offensive guys surely uh well i had a blast tonight thank you guys for checking in with us in the chat really appreciate that we're gonna well, i'm gonna let these guys say goodbye but once they do say goodbye um i'll transition over into our clinic video the audio will go off for about 20 seconds and about the first 10 minute 10 seconds i'm sorry of clint talking um but i just that's because i have to mute our our music youtube dings the music uh, somehow the the my little intro music, even though I paid to get the to have the rights for it, somehow YouTube still dings it. Uh, but anyway, th so the sound will be coming back, but it'll take about ten seconds. Also at nine thirty tonight, um, we've got a video being premiered from Dustin Mills, his a Anchor Down Leadership podcast. So that'll be here on our YouTube video as well guys thank you so much for joining us i'll give you each a, a second please tell everybody who's watching how they can find you on twitter and uh feel free to you know add anything that, that we left out keith well i just want to thank everyone for having me uh it, first time doing this is exciting uh it's just great to build a, an eight-man network out there uh, again ohio needs it so any advice anyone from from the states that are doing it well can give us uh, I'm the athletic director for our school as well, so I can always bring that back to our league and, and you know, see how we can make this thing be better. Uh, so, so thank you again. Um, I'm at Coach K Mora on Twitter. Uh, you can search Danbury Football on Twitter as well, and, and we'll be there as well. Awesome. Thanks for coming here tonight, thank you. Keith. Clint? No, th thank you for having me. You know, it's really nice to talk football, especially sitting in the state of Illinois, you know, just, just kind of hanging out almost every night. 
uh, doing nothing. Uh, but, you know, you can find us at, we're at MCP Football 09. Um, you know, we like to push out a lot of stuff with that for our kids. Um, but, you know, it was really fun talking eight-man football. You know, a little bit weird talking about the defensive side. You know, I really, I really, really enjoy the defensive side. But, you know, you can never lose a football game if you score more points than the other team. <laughs> um, it's, it's true. I've looked it up. But it, I've looked I have not it up. Yet. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thanks for joining us, both of you. We, I will say this, Keith. I feel like in Illinois, one of the things that was a huge help to us is the second we formed, we committed to playing a state championship game. Our first year, we had six teams in our league and we played a state championship game. Yep. We made playoffs. We had a playoff show. We went all out because we know everyone loves playoffs. Everyone loves it. We love it. I know they love it in Ohio. So uh, that, that would probably be one, one thing that I would tell any state who's getting going in eight man, commit to the state title game as fast as possible. Even if it was two teams, if there were two teams playing in my state, I'd say play a state title game, you know, like, publicize it the best you can. And I feel like a lot of our guys have publicized our game really well. So guys reach out to us anytime with questions men reach out to us at any time if we can help you with anything and uh, i'm committed to getting some more eight-man content on the clinic this off season so feel free to direct me when you know of guys that you think need to be on okay, all right thank you. thank you you guys take care